You're listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hayner. Hey guys, Charge and Hayner with Zoom the TBT. It's a big day. We're very excited to have John Fanta of Fox Sports on say. John, how are you doing today? I am doing fantastic, Andrew. I'm ready for TBT. This is the perfect event in basketball during the summer. There's nothing like this, and I'm so excited to be a part of it here uh, come next month. I cannot wait, my friend. It, it's it's going to be a blast. I've always admired watching it, watching this great event. The Elam ending is the best way to end games. Uh, that is for certain, and I can't wait to be a part of it and to get a front row seat for it this summer. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's always this weird space between the end of the NBA Finals, Summer League, uh, and then, of course, the start of football. Obviously, the WNBA, baseball, these are all great things. But having a little bit of high-level male basketball in between is a great thing. So let's get this. Like, what sort of year – you've obviously – this is your first time calling TBT this season, but you've been a fan for years. Like, how did you become aware of it? What is your interest in the event before being brought on this year? College Hoops junkie here. So I I can't miss it. I mean, I can't miss it during the, during the summertime and, and seeing the great players and great teams – that have come back and and these kids get a chance, you know, to to come back and play for their alma maters, for their for those teams, and then some of the special stories, you know, that we've seen, uh, like last year. I just I fell in love with Hard Fire and everything that they that they did last year that they put together. I mean, I, I just thought the story of Davin White, who had waited nine years to win his TBT money and the wait finally being over, I thought that that was so cool at the age of forty one for him to be part of, of that $1 million victory. So I've been a, a, an avid fan of this event, you know, and I just look at the, I look at the, the dynasties or the, the just the, the players that have been a part of so many great NCAA tournament moments. And now we get them here in this event and we get them on this stage and you just look at the regionals. I mean, you look at, at Louisville, you look at Lexington, you know, Freedom Hall is going to be hosting TBT games. That place is filled with history, filled with tradition. Rupp Arena taking center stage. We got Hinkle Fieldhouse. You know, I look at Yogi Ferrell being back with Assembly Ball. That was announced last week. Uh, I look at, at Sharif O'Neal now, uh, Shaquille O'Neal's sign. I look at Shaq getting involved. I mean, if, if you want to know the power of an event... The fact that Shaquille O'Neal is getting directly involved with this to the degree that he has shows that what John Mugar and his team have put together has it's I've I've loved this event because in a day and age where there's so much sports on, this event has found a way to cut through. To cut yeah, through I mean, and to make yeah. a difference. Yeah, I mean, you're. I, I don't know if we can get a more ringing endorsement of what you just said. This event, I've been a fan from since the second year. I love it. You feel with everything. I like how you mentioned the venues and people that were really aware of this. This is what's been interesting about this year. Is this probably has the greatest venue list ever of a TBT because oh. they've been to Lexington before. But last time they were in a high school gym like five years ago. Now historic Rupp Arena. Like, what does it say about the event that they were able to get Hinkle Rupp Freedom Hall? Like, what does that mean? Uh, again, the Shocks are home again. Like, what does are we going to set attendance records this summer, you think? We are. The zoo. You know, the zoo. The zoo. Uh, that's a place that when it when it was really cooking, you know, and, they've, and they've got some good good players on that team, uh, good alums. You know, for the Pitt alumni to be hosting for the first time in TBT history, like that, that's really cool. That's really cool. I think we're going to set I, – I do think we're going to set attendance records, you know, down in Houston, the, the Fertitta Center – they're going to have uh, a site as well. I'm very excited about that. I think that Cincinnati is a great, you know, you, you have Nasty Natty, you have Zip em Up, right? The Crosstown Shootout is one of the best three or four rivalries in all of college basketball. And you're talking about some big time talent on those teams. You're, you're talking about, uh, you know, at UD Arena, you're going to have Red Scare, of course, the Dayton alumni. You know, who who lost last year in the biggest upset in TBT history, but they're out for revenge. You know, you're going to have Carmen's crew. Uh, you know, you're going to have so many great teams that that make up this field. And I, I just, I think that one of the best things about about this event 
is that it shows you who is so passionate about college basketball 365 days a year. And nobody sums that up to me like Wichita. Uh, they broke an attendance record last year with a with a crowd of over 7,000 people. And, you know, they're, they're going to be loaded with fan favorite players and with guys that, that people are familiar with. But that fan base, we both know, Andrew, is special. And I think it's really cool that they're at the forefront of this, but that you have you have a great mix of blue blood programs and markets, but also markets that just are diehard college basketball fans. And it is so fitting that we're at Hinkle Fieldhouse for one this year because in Indiana, they're always thinking about basketball. They are always thinking about it. The Crossroads Classic should have never gone away, that December event that's been held uh, at the Fieldhouse there downtown that featured Indiana Butler, uh, Notre Dame, and Purdue. That should have never gone away. I think this is going to be the closest thing to it here at Hinkle Fieldhouse come July. It's interesting you mentioned the Crosstown thing, too, in Indy, because one thing is, I, I wasn't even thinking about this, but the very first TBT champions, the first year, were the Notre Dame alumni. And I'm wondering what in God's name we have to do to get them back in this, because it, to get them back in, especially with them being in Indiana, would be great. I love that you mentioned the Red Scare. I was actually there for that upset. That upset was insane, losing to India Rising and Brown Ballers. But I think you bring up all these great regions. And, I mean, it's such a plethora of great games. Like, fans are going to have such a hard decision which games to watch. Like, you mentioned the Crosstown yeah. shootout. Natty and zip them up, or it'll be at the same time playing as Lexington's uh, La Familia. Like, it'll be almost a smorgasbord of college basketball over a six-day festival for the first three rounds. Like, is it going to be difficult for fans to even figure out which ones to turn into? It's going to be, and that's a good thing. Fans are going to have to be picking and choosing, and that's why Fox Sports picked up this event. You know, it's a valuable event. It has great value on the calendar. Uh, you're going to see TBT on big broadcast TV for the first time, getting to Fox. Of course, people will be able to watch games on FS1 and FS2, but for Fox to be carrying TBT games, that is really special and I think a a, a big win. But yes, viewers are going to have to be, they're going to be competing on which games to watch. That's a good thing. That means your event is a successful one. We've got storylines. We've got teams. We've got big-name players. Every day you load up the tournament social media feeds and we're finding out new information. You know, we just get, as I'm talking with you, Frank Mason, uh, that he's going to be playing in the tournament for Mass Street, Kansas's TBT team. I mean, that's, that is awesome. Thomas Robinson back with Mass Street. Those are huge names. We got Tyler Ulis who signed on to Coach La Familia. Every day there's big time news in this sport. Uh, in TBT for this event. And and I do think there's never been more passion for basketball. The, the sport is a year-round sport. Events like this, you know, to a grassroots perspective, events like the Peach Jam, um, you know, events that we see throughout the summer now that are filling up the calendar. Last year, I did a bunch of games, you know, in, in the New York City parks that were broadcast on the NBA app. I never thought we'd get to that day, but we did. We got to it because basketball has a popularity year-round, year-round. TPT set that trend. And, and it's gotten others, I think, to think about in the TV world, others to say, should we get some of these games on our networks? You know, not just TPT. I'm saying last year, Andrew, I did Peach Jam on NBA TV. That had never been done before. That, that was never making it on television. TPT has been a trailblazer. Uh, in, in the world of, of summer sports TV. No, it's not all just baseball. This basketball event has a place on the map, and it's taken its rightful place. It's funny you mention that, too, because I used to be a pretty big baseball fan. Now you can't drive me to a game unless there's three beers because there's too much basketball. I can't waste my time with crap, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, I'm looking at actually the, the Fox Sports thing because, like, many people uh, – I'm just being be honest here. So keep it pretty loose thing. My initial thing of ESPN losing, my initial thought, I'll be very honest, was actually some of disappointment. I won't lie to you. They've had pretty good care of the event. But the best way for an event to grow is occasionally to get a new voice. And I'm extremely excited about the Fox Sports deal and more I thought about Because you mentioned the key thing. This is great. One, it's an infusion, infusion of new talent. There'll be new people calling games, including you. Obviously, the people doing it poor did a great job. But also, it's new markets, new people talking. And also, again, the three games over the air. That's, that's, that's the first time TBT has been over the air. It'll be a game in Lexington, a game in Louisville, and the final in Philly. That is 
exposure you can't get on ESPN. You can't. It isn't possible. They don't have that capability. So in your mind, is being an event being OTA, over the air, like the final step of a full legitimacy for a sporting event? Is that the, is that the last big hurdle an event has to get to? So it's like, whoa, these guys are for real. I think it was for real when it got to ESPN and launched, you know, and launched and was on the four letter network. And I, I give a lot of credit to the folks at ESPN for taking the event when it was in its infancy, when it was building things out. And they said, we're going to take this on. They did a marvelous job with it. They, they you instantly legitimize yourself when you're with one of the big boy companies at Fox. When I saw this news drop, when I was told this news was dropping, this is a privilege this is a privilege for us to carry this event. We are thrilled to bring it to people's homes. We are thrilled to provide this coverage. And I say this knowing that ESPN supplied, you know, elite level talent, uh, elite production, and and a, a lot into it, and and looked at it as as a privilege, which is exactly what we will look at it as. Uh, every time I call a game and sit down, every time I sit down for an interview, I treat it with the respect that it absolutely deserves because somebody out there is listening or watching this interview that cannot wait for TBT to start. Well, guess what? We can't wait either. And when we're calling a game or when we're doing a game, when I'm doing a game, I know the person out there watching is spending time with me watching the game. So I'm going to give them the experience that I would want if I was in their shoes. And that is one with passion, with energy, with storylines, with insights that you can't get. Otherwise, we're going to give all that to you. We're very excited. You know, I'm very excited. I'm I'm grateful every day to be part of the Fox family. You know, Fox gave me a chance. I'm a 2017 graduate of Seton Hall, who actually had a TBT team a couple of years yes. back in Milwaukee. In, yes. In mm -hmm. Milwaukee, and actually played some played pretty well, Mark. But Travis Diener had other plans. And uh, and Golden Eagles, TBT, they flew high and, and kept rolling from there. But uh, I covered TBT that year out in Milwaukee. So I've covered this event before, you know, from a digital perspective. Now I can't wait to call these games. I'm, I'm so much looking forward to it. But Fox gave me a shot back in 2017. I, I interned for them in 2016. I was an intern. I interned for guys like Rob Stone and Chris Myers and Frank Thomas, Dontrell Willis, you know, top of the line talent that I got to interact with Kevin Burkhart, who did a marvelous job. And I learned there what TV is all about. And uh, one of, one of the first bosses I had at Fox as an intern said, nobody wants to work with an asshole. Nobody wants to work with a jerk. And I've tried to treat the job like that every single day. You know, I went out to LA to do that internship. I lived in a hostel um, with a guy, with a guy that was on the other side of the room named George, who was from Africa trying to make a better living for himself. He was trying to make a dream come true. I was trying to make a dream come true. And it's been a dream come true ever since. And now I get to cross TBT off the list of events I get to call. I get to do this job. I don't do this job. I get to do this job. It is the best to have this job. Well, I can already tell that people who are going to watch this event will love your energy. I'm I'm trying to keep up. Or this is amazing. Like you're really into it. I love the origin stories of people I get into things too. Because talking about living in a hostel, everybody's start has always had a little funny bumps. I'm really interested to hear that's that's really cool. Speaking of your career, and you're already a pretty big, well-known name for somebody who's only been doing this for a little bit of time. Fox over, and you know, too, college sports tend to be divided into networks. Like I actually don't watch a ton of Fox sports because. My fan base, and you see from my room and follow shows, I'm a huge Memphis fan, which means I'm tied to the AAC, I'm tied to ESPN. Uh, my partner, she's a huge Q's fan, again, a ACC, ESPN. So I don't watch as much Big East. I don't watch as much Big Ten. So are you excited about having fan bases who normally don't see you call games being exposed to you this summer? Absolutely. Uh, all are welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to interact with, with fans that are typically watching other games and other leagues. I can't wait. I won't give away where I'll be, but I can tell you I'm going to be interacting with some new fan bases here this summer that might not be as familiar with my work. And I can't wait because I share your passion. And I might not know everything there is to know about the history of your program right now, but I can tell you this much. When I sit down to do your game or sit down to call these players action, I'm going to know about them and, and know everything there is, you know, as much as possible there is to know about them. 
because I want to give the viewer that experience. You know, for me, calling Big East games and calling games and events that are affiliated with our Fox family, it's been a blessing to get those opportunities. The energy that I dedicate to those assignments is the same energy I will dedicate to, to schools and to teams that might not be as familiar as me. You only know me from those areas because that's that's who gave me a shot. That's what I was given a chance to do those games, to do those events. So I can't wait to interact with new fans. Can't wait to to step into a different pool and do this. And, uh, you know, it's going to be so much fun um, because I think that TBT connects the past to the present. Well, in this TV world, people are going to get connected to people that they might not be as familiar with. And hopefully after watching a couple of the games that, that I'm on or that my colleagues are on, Hopefully uh, you like the experience and then maybe we'll either be doing more of your games down the road or you'll be coming and hanging out with us when we're on for our, our respective leagues. I love just how infectious your energy is. It's like such a blessing to have an interview like this. This is so much fun. Uh, I mentioned, you mentioned the research goes into this. I think it's something that's really important because a lot of these teams are kind of a lot of alumni. They're kind of thrown together for this event. So there's a lot of continuity, but also it's a lot of, it's almost like an amped up pro-am with pros, like a really interesting sort of thing. But there's some teams that are non-alumni, like your Eberline drives, like your sideline cancers. Um, what kind of flavor do you think the non-alumni teams bring to an event like this? A great flavor um, because they offer different storylines, storylines that you would never, you know, that you wouldn't have otherwise. Um, guys that, whether they're, they've come from the international route uh, or whether they've come from a different route. Um, they, they have storylines and those teams that have played for such a great cause, Andrew, you know, those teams that have played for such a powerful cause um, that, that to me, you know, that, that's what really, that's, that's what drives me to love this event even more because you're talking about yeah. teams and players that, you know, look at look at the Purple Heart story, right? Um, and and the the power of that story, you know, representing uh, Dwayne Coswell's goddaughter, you know, who was killed tragically in a, a senseless gun violence incident. Um, that that Andrew's beyond the game. That's beyond the game. You know, that team was created to honor somebody, um, and to raise awareness for something. And we see that. You know, we've we've seen that. Guys that played at different divisions of college basketball. Guys that haven't played D1. So many coaches say to me every year, there's a lot of great players who have played D2 and D3. Well, TBT helps us realize, helps helps reinforce that. You know, helps reinforce that's the case. That there's a lot of, there's a hell of a lot of great players that played at different levels and in different areas. So for me, you know, I, I think that that's a, a sideline cancer. You know, playing for pancreatic cancer research. Um, D2, as as you just know, knocked out Lexington a few years ago. TBT is a worldwide basketball celebration of different avenues and routes that people have taken to play the game they love. 100%. Um, and that's a great answer, too. Especially some of, you get these D2 guys, you get some other people knocking people out. That's always really interesting. One thing that's also great about this event is the thing that always kind of drives me nuts is I'm a I'm a really good architect. People know that's what my job when they listen to this, but I'm not one of the 450 best architects in the world. It's a very hard rock to lift. Most people aren't one of the 450 best people in their career, even if they're very good at their jobs. There are only 450 NBA jobs, which means you can be one of the greatest basketball players to walk through thing given time and not have an NBA ride. So in your mind, how interesting it is to combine the fact that you're bringing in former college stars often playing for a school, which says a nostalgia thing to also making fans aware that like the 451st guy is still an absolute <laughs> bucket. Like how interesting is it to like go, Hey, by the way, Marcus Keene is playing like in Italy and you may have not heard of him, but like he puts fear into the heart of NBA players in the summer. Like how interesting is it to see these guys who you may not know of go absolutely insane in this event. Oh, uh, it's, that's a money that is one of the best things about this event because it absolutely reinforces the fact that there is a rich wealth of talent that exists. And Andrew, that it's really hard to make it to the top. 
it's really, really difficult to make it in the NBA. Like, we don't fully appreciate the NBA draft is next week. I work the draft at the Barclays Center. I do a bunch of commentary on the in-house show at Barclays on draft night. And my favorite thing is watching these kids' dream come true. By the same token, realizing the fact that, you know, 58 guys will get drafted next week. So it's a very select group. This isn't even the NFL or MLB, where you can be a a round draft pick in MLB. In the NFL, you could be a sixth round draft pick. That doesn't exist in basketball. Basketball is a smaller class, right? It's a smaller group. So you are absolutely right. What we learn, you know, is that there's guys out there who have gone overseas that have had a great career, that have become synonymous with their fans, that have made a damn good living off what they do, that have made a couple million dollars. But now at TBT, this is the beauty of TBT. We get to shed light on it on American television, broadcast TV. Their stories get told, and they get their earnings, publicity-wise, that they so deserve. I love that too, because it, it's always it, it just drives me nuts when people are like this guy's no good. And I'm like, you go play him, you see what happens. You you go cover Marcus Keene and you keep him from scoring. Show me how it's done. I would love to see that. Um, I know you're running out of time, so we got a couple more questions out for you to go. Have you called games with the Elam ending before? I know I think you have in the G League and also a few other events. Like, what's your thoughts on the Elam ending? Oh, it's outstanding. There's a drama with it. There's a drama with it. You know when it's going to end. You know, sometimes the buzzer sounds and it's very anticlimactic. At the Elam, in the Elam ending, it's always climatic. It's always eventful. It's always dramatic. Comebacks can happen. There is no clock. Shut it off. We can earn it defensively with stops. We're not going to run out of time. You've got to earn it. You've got to earn it to win. And if you're trailing, it gives you a new hope. Elam ending gives you a new hope if you're the trailing team. If you play defense and you get stops and you start to rack up buckets, you can change the game. And if you're the team that's going to win it, Andrew, there's nobody that's disputing you if you win the game. Nobody that's going mean, to there... What's that? There was that one time where OE had the foul that wasn't really a foul, but that's just me complaining about one thing. That's, that's just one complaining call, yeah. Well, the <laughs> most, most of the time, most of the time, Andrew, you'll, you'll remember the one forever, most of the time, it is it is the way to end games, and it's such a great way to end games. It creates drama. It creates. It makes that end of game call really exciting. I'm I'm thrilled. I love that about it, and I'm excited to to bring that to people. Yeah, definitely. It's 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 a really great way to end games. We got a couple more, and we'll get you out of here. Um, there's already sixty. I think sixty one of the sixty four teams have been announced. The brackets come out in a couple of days. Really excited about that. Are there any teams you're tracking? I know La Familia looks really good as usual. Heard that is loading up. They made it deep. Hardfire is always, despite their average age of a million years old, is always one of the best teams in this event. I mean, is there any teams that you're looking at as a, as a dark horse to win the whole thing? Well, you know, look out for Stars of Stores. UConn alumni playing for the first time. Ryan Boatwright, Joey Calcaterra. They're going to be coached by Chris Smith. That's a, a fresh thing, and it seems like a UConn right now. If they've got a team in the fight, they're going to they're going to be in it. You know, they're they are going to uh, be involved in making a run. Um, you know, I'll be interested to see what Nasty Natty brings to the table. Um, Jacob Evans, there. You know, they're, they're an interesting team that I'm going to be looking out for. You know, you're right on Heartfire being the defending champs. Can can Red scare? You know, be able to bounce back here at UD Arena. Can they respond? Aftershocks looks like they're loading up, right, with Connor Frankamp and Marcus McDuffie. But I go right down the line. You know, I, I just look at there's so much talent here in this event. Uh, we don't know everybody uh, yet. We're, we're waiting on what exactly things are going to look like. But what I could say is when you look at the talent uh, of some of the top teams, it's going to be – What's going to be fascinating is who is that dark horse? Who emerges as that dark horse? You know, we are bleed green coming off, making it to the TBT championship there. They got alumni. They got a lot of talent. I want to see here, um, you know, what we see from some of those other teams. And will we see the Ville, right? Will we see the Ville and will we see La Familia? La Familia is the headliner here. Eric Bledsoe, Willie Cauley-Stein, Andrew Harrison. I mean, La Familia is the team that I'm I'm focused on as we get this thing underway because if they can make a run, you know, if you get a run out of out of uh, Ville or La Familia, 
you're going to see television ratings. You're going to see a lot of interest. You, La Familia could, could get this event taken off into a different stratosphere if they are to go on a run. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay, I know you got to get out of here. So one last thing. Any closing thoughts for people who are listening to this about why they need to turn into TBT this summer? I'll give you the hype video right now. This is TBT. It is the summer basketball event featuring the familiar faces and some fresh ones that you might not be as familiar with. But one thing is for certain. They're all fighting for the same prize. One million dollars all across America. This event gives fans a chance to check out basketball at their favorite houses of hoops throughout the summer. It sets buildings on fire, and it will do it. Hinkle magic, it comes to TBT. Over at Louisville, the passion of that area, we're going to see it. Wichita, those fans are already waiting outside for the game to tip off. One million bucks, elite star power, high energy on a road to the city of brotherly love, but there will be no love lost when we get to Philadelphia. I can't wait for it. I can't wait to bring it to everybody. We can't wait to bring it to all of you across the networks of Fox Sports. TBT, it's a summer party, and it's going down. John, this was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for your energy. That was a lot of fun. John Fan of Fox Sports, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks so much. See you guys soon. And this has been Zoom the TBT, signing off. Hope you enjoyed listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hater. Subscribe to YouTube, follow on Twitter, and give us your money.